Okay, uh, hello everyone. So we were uh, discussing about uh, basic introduction to Python uh, and in the last class we talked about uh, how to create variables in Python, how to assign values to them, how to manipulate uh, your strings, how to do some basic mathematical operations on numbers and then we also looked into how to use if else statements, looping and uh, at the end uh, uh, we talked about uh, how to use uh, this num5 function uh, and uh, we also saw how to read files and how to manipulate files. Okay. So today we will continue the discussion and our focus today will be to understand some of the statistics aspects that are available or statistics function that are available in Python. Okay. So when we want to use statistics, we want to have to play with data, maybe you also want to use uh, uh, visualization aspects so that we can see how the data pattern looks like. So for this we would be interested in many uh, libraries. So here as usual I am going to take import the numpy function and also there is another nice library in python that is mostly to uh, see visualization of the data that is called seaborn that also I am going to import as sns and then there is another nice library called matplotlib.pyplot and from that I am going to import a particular fun uh, library this is called a figure and uh, I will also import, import this function matplotlibpyplot as plt and also there is another function Oh, sorry, another library called SciP, and I am going to also ex take some uh, functions from that. So, from this uh, SciP stats, I am going to import uh, this norm function, which is going to help us to deal with the Gaussian distribution, and also from the SciP, I am also going to import stats, which we will see that which is going to help us look into various statistical aspects and uh, I am also going to import beta function uh, as uh, a beta underscore dist and I will also going to take um, beta from scipy stats okay. Okay, so these two are actually same if you see that but here I have just is named beta as beta distribution here it is simply beta. Okay, now let us get started with normal distributions how to generate samples using normal distribution. So for that suppose you want to generate normal distribution with mu and sigma given as 0 0.1 notice that in python in the same line you can assign two variables here. So, mu and sigma are assigned values 0 and 0.1 respectively. And now on in NumPy, there is a function random.normal which will help us to generate the samples according to normal distribution. We have to just pass on this mu and sigma values and how many samples we want then it will generate us. So, let us see that. Now, I am just executing the cells now. Uh, okay, now I have this okay, I have this data generated as which is like about a thousand data points which are Gaussian distributed. Okay. Now I want to see, let us see that okay, now you want to let us say you want to see the PDF or CDF of Gaussian distribution. Okay. So, for that you first need to specify an 
at which point you want to see the PDF CDF. So let's say I want to see um, the plots between minus 2 to 6.1. So I'm going to use this function NPA range to get those values. Okay. And then, okay, this is the same thing written here. Now what I will do is I will use this function norm.pdf. Notice that norm that we got it from uh, scipy stats which we imported as norm and dot pdf. So this is going to generate me, give me this pdf of a normal distribution at the points x. Okay, similarly, I have this uh, CDF now. If I'm going to call norm.cds function, this is going to give me CDF of this normal distribution at point x, at point x. So here in a, this norm.pdf can take other variables like the mu and sigma squares, but uh, here we have not passed anything other than the points where we want to see the PDF. So it is going to give us a PDF which is normally distributed that is with mu 0 and variance 0.1. Now we want to see that right for that we need to use this plot function which we imported as plt this math plot lib dot pi plot we imported as plot. Now I am going to first say I have to first I am going to uh, I think uh, here uh, yeah so first I am going to create this variable ax which is plot dot subplots and this is going to create a figure which has of size 10 cross 6 that is 10 cross 10 comma 6 is giving you the aspect ratio. Now I have this x I want to see the uh, y values of this vdy function and now I can all this plot function also help me in assigning the labels I can write label equals to pdf and also use the color for those uh, lines that are going to show. Okay, first let us see this how it looks so now if I do this you see that range is between minus 6 to 6 and uh, this is like a plot of a Gaussian distribution and uh, this is like a plot of, of a uh, CDF of a Gaussian distribution. Notice that it is uh, at a 0 we are going to see the value of half as expected. Now this things the labels which we put PDF they have come here and the color red is assigned to the PDF function and blue is assigned to the CDF function. And if you want to label x and y labels that provision is there you can simply say set y label as simply probability and which whatever color you want to appear and similarly you can label x and so that is why this probability and x has appeared with color blue and uh, you can also give the title to this plot uh, and here I have given it as a pdf and cdf standard normal okay. So now let us see uh, this plot legend actually plots this legend here if you do not put this then this uh, this legend will not appear so if I do this there is no legend here but if I do this uh, the legend will appear like this we can generate RC PDFs and CDF for various distribution now I am going to use another one exponential distribution but here instead of looking into PDF CDF let us try to generate the sample according to that distribution with, with the specified parameters. So suppose let us say I want to generate exponentially distributed samples with parameter 3.45. Now there is a function for it called rand.exponential. I can pass on that whatever the lambda value I want and how many samples I want and it will generate those many. And now I want to see now I have a data now I want to see that uh, histogram wise how they look. 
So I hope all of you understand histogram basically splits the uh, groups the data into various bins and uh, see that in each bin how many points are following falling and uh, the number of uh, samples in a particular bin will give you the height of that bin. Okay, to soothe that I am going to use this function figure which has uh, aspect ratio 10 into 5 and then I am going to use this SNS function which we have defined and in that I am going to call this function hist plot passing on the data I have. Okay, now let us and uh, let us see what happens. Now if you see that I have this, so here it is saying it has basically looks like it has grouped um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 between um, it has uh, grouped the data into this bins. The bins are of shown by this uh, vertical bars and the height of this vertical told us out of this 1000 samples how many samples fill in each of these bins. And if you see that roughly it has this uh, exponential structure to it. And uh, again we can uh, label this x and y labels. So y labels are uh, named as count here and uh, x is labeled simply x. Similarly we can do it for uh, uh, other distributions like here let us say in this exercise I am going to see the PDF of how gamma distribution. Now first as I said when I want to see a PDF I need to first specify at what point I want to see the specify. Here I have specified this to be uh, range between 0 to 40 and this 0 to 40 is to be split into 100 points with linear spacing. Okay, now this uh, uh, stats function, so this stat library we have which we imported as from the uh, SciP package. I can call the gamma function and uh, do the generate the PDF. I need to pass the points where I want to see. Now here I also need to specify what is the, here I have specified shift and the scale values, right. Now I have plotted actually 3 here for different possible different values of uh, A and scale and uh, I want to also visualize them now. To visualize, so now the graph is generated here, let us say to visualize what I am going to do is again I am going to uh, use this uh, function subplots in plot and specify the aspect ratio okay and I will call each one of them now. Uh, I want to see first the y1 and y2 and y3 so I have passed on them to your plot function and also each one of them I have labeled okay with uh, sorry not I said shift it is actually shape parameter and the scale parameters. And this is how it looks uh, and here we have also put a legend and uh, okay, let us see what happens if I do not have this plot here. Okay. And now when I say plot, I do not see much difference uh, but legend is there. Okay, let us see again. Okay, now if I put this, yeah, only see the difference I see is that whatever that uh, uh, some naming was coming on the top that disappeared. So this mat plot legend something came here and if I say plot I think it is just showing me a clean image without any additional things which I did not ask for it. Okay, Next we can similarly look for beta distribution here again uh, uh, I have this beta distribution but here see like I had passed on if I want to generate multiple 
gamma distribution I specified uh, the scale and uh, shape parameters one for three set of uh, scale and shape parameters but and I have to then call this plot function three times maybe this can be avoided if we intelligently use our loops and that is what we will demonstrate now for the beta distribution here. Suppose beta distributions we want to generate uh, the CDF for uh, five different uh, pairs of uh, parameters alpha and beta parameters. So, this alpha parameters I am taking 0 0.5, 5, 1, 2, 2 here and similarly beta values have taken 0 0.5, 1, 3, 2, 5 here and the x values where I want to see that I have taken it to be um, the interval 0 0.01 to 1 with the increment of 0 0.01. So, there are about 100 points. Now, this uh, for the plot figure I have taken the figure size to be 10 into 7 and now instead of calling this plot function now for each pair I can try to write a call them iteratively through a loop function. Here I am defining variable i which is going to range length of a. So, I want to have to plot 5 figures here. So, I am just defining that to be length of a and then I can just use the beta dot pdf function and pass x a of i and b of i and then I can simply draw that by using this plot function. So, here notice that ok first let us plot this. So, now nice we got a nice plot here. Now, you see that in to write the label I have used this r. This is useful whenever I want to use this symbols like here I want alpha to be 0 0.5 alpha I can't directly write here like this, but I can use the LaTeX code for alpha which is a backslash alpha here and python to know about this I will write an r at the beginning. So, now if you see that it is going to be alpha here and then it is equal ok alpha equal and then I have added a string here this is the string I am adding and this corresponding to the value of a at location i and after that if you see I have added another string here which is a comma and a space which has appeared here and then again I need to get this LaTeX code for beta to let it know that I am writing a LaTeX a command here I will write going to write r and then again I will add append this string. I want to show b i but b i I can't directly put so I will convert into string and append it here. Okay. And I can also specify the range of y here which I specified by giving the y limit. So, in this way the plotting and visualization of the CDF is pretty easy just by few lines of code we will get and you can play around with them. And of course, we can label them, uh, we can give the x and y label as per your wish and also specify the font sizes. So, there will be multiple options here like size and if you want to add some colors and all if you do not specify any colors by default it is going to take it as black, but if you want to specify some colors you have to pass on that argument here. Okay, so, let us add this plot dot show here and see what happens which we saw last time. So, you see that when I did plot dot show it cleaned up like not no other text you give other than these figures.